let's take a quick look at why depreciation and capital expenditures, at least in theory, should net out over time for a slow, mature cash cow company. So let's say I buy a computer. And I buy a computer at the end of year zero, which will be my first starting point for my analysis. And let's say I spend $3,000 on this computer. And let's say that I project that this computer will be useful for me for three years. The useful life is three. And therefore, I will depreciate $1,000 a year for three years until this computer is completely depreciated. So let's take a look at that. Year zero, I bought $3,000. And in year one, year two, and year three, I quote unquote get $1,000 back. That's my depreciation because my profit went down, but my cash flow comes back up for that. Now, let's say again, I bought another computer in year one. I spent another $3,000, and in year two, I start depreciating it. Remember, I'm buying at the end of the year, so another $1,000 every year. Then let's say I bought another computer in year two, another $3,000, and I depreciate that over three years as well. And you know what? Let's just do one more. Let's say I bought another computer at the end of year three now. And then I depreciate that over each year. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what these sum up to. So far, my cash flow says the following. At the end of year zero, I have negative 3000 in cash. Oh, it went down by 3000 in year one, I spent the $3,000 again, but I quote unquote got back another thousand of that due to depreciation, which lowered my profit, but it didn't lower my cash flow. So I'm down in a hole now, two grand so far. Next year, take a look at that, negative 1K. And then look, starting in year three now, I'm at zero. I break even. So over time, my depreciation will equal my capital expenditures. And of course, this assumes what? This assumes that you do not increase your capital expenditures dramatically, which you wouldn't be doing if you were a slow growth company anyway. So that brings me to another point. If that's the case, then one could say that in the startup phase, this is why you need money, you need capital to start a company, because you need to have the capital in CapEx and working capital to build up to the point where you can be at a long run, sustainable, low growth, mature cash cow. And that is why in a theory basis, these will all now be zero as well because I keep having additional years. So this column here basically continues in year three, continues to get repeated throughout because I will always have three years worth of a computer to depreciate and I'll always be buying a new computer for $3,000. And anyway, so that's the theory of why capital expenditures and depreciation will equal over time. Well, let's take a look at that. So again, CapEx will equal depreciation over time. So what about working capital? Well, the idea is the same. If I am a stable cash cow business and working capital, I need working capital to sustain normal day-to-day -day operations. But if I have very slow growth, the idea is that my working capital now will also equal zero because I don't need to put that much more money into my business to continue to sustain the growth. Whereas when I was in high growth, just like in the exact same example of CapEx, I needed money. I was negative cash, but now I get it back, so to speak, and I break even to zero. And that is therefore the reason why, if we're going to be talking theory on this kind of cash flow, why CapEx and depreciation will net out to zero and working capital will also net out to zero.